So let's have a moment of quiet before we begin our worship this morning. The words, all the words that will be on the screen. And let's say this prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, you know everything about me. My thoughts, my needs, my hopes, my dreams. I give this time to you now to worship, to pray, and to serve. Help me to be more like Jesus. Now let us bring to mind those things we have thought, said and done for the hurt of God and hurt others. God our Father, we come to you to say sorry for the things we think, do and say that separate us from you. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, we are sorry. For behaving however we want to that thinking of you, we are sorry. For failing you by what we do and think and say, we are sorry. For letting ourselves be led away from you by temptations that are around us, we are sorry. And for living as if we were ashamed to be part of your family, we are sorry. As we think about those things, Robin's going to come and read to us from Romans 8, 38 to 39. Neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, that any nor any past in your creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't it wonderful that God loves us? Amen. Praise be to God. Isn't it amazing that God forgives us? Amen. Praise be to God. Isn't it sensational that God accepts us? Amen. Praise be to God.
second reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31, 33, and 44 to 45. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like these that the woman took and mixed in the three measures of flour until all of it was left. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pansy, for reading. Thank you. What is, the, what is the kingdom of heaven? And before I delve into the parable of the mustard seed that we want to talk about this morning, some people are kind of confused. Sometimes called the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And I just want to paint a very simple picture for you for what the kingdom of heaven is, or another way of explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if you think about it, we've got heaven and we've got earth. And I like to think of the two kind of circles, like that, two big circles. And originally, they were overlapping 100%. You think about the Garden of Eden, you think about Adam and Eve walking, that's a story about how the heaven and earth are together, God and people mixed together, 100%. These two circles overlapped. And then after the fall, after humans put themselves, they separated themselves from God, the kind of two circles, the two circles kind of parted. What Jesus did was he brought the two circles back together again. If you like, where they overlapped, Jesus. That's it, but they were like, Jesus. Jesus represented heaven. He was bringing heaven to earth. That's why when he said to his disciples to pray, Lord, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He was bringing heaven to earth. And we're aiming for a day when those two circles will overlap completely again, where God and people will be 100% together. We will walk again with God. It's not that earth will be done away with and it will just be heaven. It's not that we live on this earth to try and escape to get to heaven. No, it's about bringing the two together. That's what the gospel was. That's why Jesus came to the earth. The earth is so important to God. Creation is so important. We want us to be reconciled again. And so if you think about it, that's where we're heading. Those two circles overlapping one more time. And we are called to be bringing us to heaven to earth. When we sing right at the end, lift every voice, look at the first line. It's about bringing heaven to earth. When we pray the Lord's Prayer later in our worship, it's about bringing heaven to earth. That's what we do. So when Jesus is talking about what's the kingdom of heaven like, this is what he's describing. He's describing these overlapping circles that come together. And he comes up with this parable of the mustard seed. Do you remember what? Who was listening two weeks ago? Hands up if you were listening. No, don't put that hand above. <laughs> Who was listening? What are parables like? What did I say? What vegetable are parables like? Do you remember? Onions. Thank W was listening. Well, give W an answer. W's. They're like onions. They have layers. Now I've got in this little tray here. Hang on. I've got a mustard seed. It is so tiny. It's so tiny. Can you see it? Tiny. That's what it is. You see, it's tiny. It's so tiny. But what I'm going to do is I want to. You're going to remember this for the rest of your lives because what we're going to do is I've got this mustard seed in it's tiny, and I'm going to, I've got a biro here, and I'm going to put the mustard seed in the biro, and then I'm going to invite my camera assistant, Helen, is going to go to the back of the church uh, hall, and she's going to fire the mustard seed, and I'm going to catch it back in the tray. <laughs> I'm just going to get the mustard seed here, it is tiny. Let's put it in there. Got it? Don't let it fall out, don't let it fall out. 
Okay, ready? Right. So if you go to the back of the hall. Okay, ready? So remember that parables are like onions. They have layers. And the parable of the mustard seed, maybe we could get the reading back up again. Uh, the mustard seed reading, that'd be great. Yeah? Like a mustard seed. Uh, that someone took and sowed in this field. Actually, the other the translation is garden, field. Uh, good place. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when it's grown, it's greatest the shrubs, and becomes a tree, and the birds of the air come and make nests and branches. And, stuff. and that all just sounds really nice, doesn't it? How lovely. And so, layer one is that we can see that the kingdom of heaven is designed to grow. Remember the two circles? And if you like, let it overlap. I wish I had to, I was, I was trying to find two hula hoops. You know, but there's no, we've got two people who's going to overlap and we can see where they intersect. And as that intersection that grows, that intersection grows as they get closer and closer together. And so from this parable, we know that the kingdom of heaven is designed to grow. Everybody knows. Yeah, exactly. It's designed to grow, isn't it? It's designed, it's designed on earth to bring heaven to earth. It's designed to grow. Layer two. See, now mustard, in biblical times, it's not a mustard that Jesus is talking about was a weed, and he didn't plant weeds in fields. And mustard, if you know anything about mustard, biblical yeah, Palestinian mustard, it grows to about, if, if you're really lucky, it might grow about six feet tall. If you're really lucky, there's a weed, it might grow six feet tall. And it certainly wouldn't grow into a tree. And it certainly wouldn't grow, you wouldn't plant it in a field, you wouldn't plant it in a garden, and it wouldn't grow into a tree that the birds with lesson. Remember, parables designed to jar with the listener. What's a, what's a good Bermudian wheat that grows really big? Who's a bit of that? Fennel. Fennel? Fennel? Yeah. It's like a fennel seed that you planted in your prized rose bed that grew into a huge tree and all the kissabees could go nest in it and bluebirds and redbirds could nest in it. It doesn't make sense, does it? It's completely and utterly bonkers. And yet Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. It's like a mustard seed that somebody took, planted in a garden, and it grew into a skew. Jesus, so what is Jesus saying? Yes, the kingdom of heaven is designed to grow, but when we get that, we can see that's a nice, easy thing to take from it. But who would plant a weed in their garden? And the weeds don't grow that big. Something very special about God's kingdom, the way it grows. It needs God. It's something extraordinary. It's not just not just a seed that grows into a tree, it's not just designed to grow. We could have picked anything, couldn't we? We could have picked any plant. It's designed to grow. So this is an exchange, it's a special kind of kingdom. But going on from that, maybe go, let's go a bit deeper. Why would God, why would Jesus choose to pick a weed to plant? It's like a weed that's planted. You know anything about the Gospels? Jesus' heart is for the poor, the vulnerable, the brokenhearted. He's coming to reconcile human fact to God. He didn't hang out, mostly, he didn't hang out with the rich, the famous, the wealthy. He hung out with the poor. He was accused of hanging out with disrespectable women and drunkards. And he hung out with the people that needed him most. Who is the kingdom of God for? Who is the kingdom of heaven for? It's of course it's for everybody. But what do the weeds represent? Who, who is like a weed? Who feels like they are the lowest of the low? And Jesus says, no, it's like a weed planted in a garden that grows into a beautiful tree, so big that the birds of the air will make their nests. This is what the kingdom of God is like. 
parables have layers. And that's what Jesus always said. For those that have ears to hear, hear. Listen up. Listen to what I'm saying. Do you get the deeper message of what the kingdom of heaven is about? I posted on Facebook a bit about Emancipation Sunday. I've written a bit more of a sermon type thing uh, that you can read on there. Uh, talking about the kingdom of heaven and how it relates to slavery. Back in biblical times, how it relates to slavery in modern times, the heinous, horrendous slavery in modern times. And I uh, just urge you to read that. It's a bit long, it's a bit deep for today to, to, to do that sentence. It's on Facebook, it's published now, you can go read that at your leisure. But we are, as we, as the abolitionists fought against slavery, as they fought against injustice, that's what we are still called to do today, aren't we? Because the kingdom of heaven is for the weeds of this world, it's for those who don't feel worthy to plant them in the garden, and they are the ones who As we reflect on that, let's listen now to uh, this incredible hymn, John Newton's incredible hymn, Amazing Grace, made even better, I think, it's by Chris Tomlin. I have this incredible chorus to it. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Amen.
were young, we were taught to pray like this, right? I invite you today to pray in whatever way is most meaningful to you as we ask God to hear our prayers. Let us close our eyes. Let us all think of a place that needs God's love. It could be a nation, a town, a school, even your own home. Somewhere that you want God to bless. Hold that place in your mind. God, please bless the places we are holding before you now. Bring them your peace, your comfort, your love. Let us now bring our community before God. Think of someone who is in leadership or someone who serves us. Perhaps someone in the government, someone in health care, a carer, a teacher, someone you would like the Lord to bless. Please now hold them in your mind. we are holding before you now. May they know your peace, your comfort, and your love. Bring them all they may need to help lead and serve our community. Amen. Let us now bring those we love before God. Think of someone that you love, that you would like God to bless. It could be someone in your family, someone who needs support and care at this time. Please hold them in your mind. Lead us not into temptation, 
but to deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We are very to sing our final hymn this morning. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven <laughs> ring. I like that because it's got that ring on here, isn't it? As well, double meaning there. Anyway, but I doubt it. But let's stand and sing this together in choir. That is. <laughs> Churches across the United Kingdom, 
Um, it was one of the first to, uh, of these to come out, and used that one rather than the American one or the French one, or whatever. But it's useful, absolutely useful. And when the video is playing, you are free to leave. Uh, Whereas if you want to stay for the whole thing, it's the last six minutes, just to let you know. But it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, but you'll be free to leave. But let me read these, and God, let's pray these lyrics. And uh, now, as a part of our blessing, and the bit involved, we'll see uh, the bits that you've done in there. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. As we receive, we agree. Amen. May his favour be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May his presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you. He is for you. Amen. So, my dear friends, I love you, church, here, Holy Trinity and St. Mark's. Go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. In the name of